Hi guys, today we're talking about uh, costs of entry to an ongoing cash flow cost for a business if they have a commercial property. So what do I mean by that? Um, most people think, great, I'm going to get a commercial property, I need a physical property to be trading from, uh, and they think about rent. That's kind of number one thing. What they don't sometimes factor in is all the other additional costs that come into it, um, which they've got to pay for. So what are those costs? Well, fundamentally, as we said, we have rent. That's going to be your biggest number one cost. Okay. Uh, number two, you're going to have business rates. What I mean by that? Every property in England or Wales is subject to business rates. It's, uh, it's a bit like you when you pay your council tax for your house. Every property, every billboard that you can see, anything that's kind of commercially viable that produces some kind of income in any way, shape, or form, and even ones that don't, um, are subject to business rates tax. So what you'll have uh, is you'll have what's called a rateable value on the business, which is an estimate of um, how much rent roughly the property is worth in theory. And then you'll pay a proportion of that, normally about 45% in business rate. So as a rough rule of thumb, if you know you're going to be paying X in rent for a property, factor in, let's say, half or just under, that's how much you're going to be paying every year in business rates. Okay, what else have we got? We've got a uh, service charge. So what that means is uh, essentially if it's a uh, self-contained building, you're going to be responsible for the external repairs. So effectively you're paying that way, so repairs. Or if you're part of a bigger block or even, let's say, a shop with some flats above that you don't have anything to do with, you'll get charged a service charge bill periodically or regularly, which is going to be for the upkeep of the whole building. So there'll be a service charge cost there, um, and it just depends on the age and spec of the building and how much you're sharing in common with other parties within the building. Um, you've then got insurance. Um, now, insurance, by that I mean generally uh, the building insurance. Now, you won't be paying or taking out the policy for the building's insurance. The landlord typically will always do that because he wants to know that the building's insured in case it burns down. Uh, it can be reinstated. But he will send you the invoice. So probably once a year, you'll get an invoice from the landlord, or you should, or their managing agents, for the building's insurance. That could be anything typically from probably a £1,000 to a few thousand pounds, depending on the size of the property that you're taking on. You've then got to think about kind of internally how you're running the business and those kind of costs. So, you know, those subsidiary costs you're talking about, you know, utilities, you know, you've got maybe gas, you've got electric, you've got your phones, you've got internet, uh, you've got water, you know, all these things that you're going to be needing to kind of heat and and power your company effectively the business going forward um, and that's about it really you might have some other costs but that's more business specific uh, kind of soft services they're the main things you've got to think about so try and factor all of those costs in put in a bit of a budget you can work out some of the costs on you know service charge business rates insurance you can put a bit of a guesstimate on those as you're going through and if you're not sure if you're viewing a property for example ask the agent, get your surveyor to ask the agent and try and nail down those costs so you can build it into your cash flow to see if you can afford it. Because the last thing you want is to get a property, go in there, start trading and think, SHIT, you know, I've got all these costs to pay that I didn't quite factor in. So do your due diligence, do your, do your forward planning and uh, avoid any nasty surprises later. Hope you found this useful. Any questions, give me a shout, drop me a note and we'll try and cover those subjects in any uh, future videos. See you soon.